Hi everybody, this is part 7 of my 2004 Mini Cooper S blown engine video series. In this part, we finished assembling the powertrain and made it back up to the car. Now in this engine we're putting in brisk racing plugs, which is what I usually use. It's product plug wire number 1, 2, Three, four. Change tensioner time. I've replaced way too many of these. we can throw on the supercharger and the alternator water pump inlet supercharger time vacuum cleaner installation time wait I need to put the intake manifold on first Intake manifold time. All right, now we can put the supercharger back on. Alright, we'll put the chain on here to get ready to lift it up and pair it back to the transmission now. So we can put the flywheel and the rear main seal on. Alright, it's rear main seal and flywheel time. I don't really like putting rear main seals on for this car because they're so big. What I like to do is get the lip just started just a little bit at an angle first and then work, it, work my way around until the whole lip is on. You know, sometimes I just gently push on it to get the lip to go on just with the smooth part of a pick. Now it's time to just hammer real gentle-like. And I go through and check for any high spots. All right, that's that. Now it's flywheel time. These holes are not perfectly centered, so we have to kind of rotate the flywheel until we get the right hole. This is so that everything's in balance. There we go. Nope, there's one still out of position. There we go.
All right, these uh, flywheel bolts are 66 foot-pounds. I put a little bracket here to stop the flywheel from spinning. We'll dry fit this one time just to make sure it all fits all right. It's been having trouble going on. There it goes. So what I like to do here is feel around the outside. I don't trust this centering tool, especially on the Mini Cooper where there's no pilot bearing. So I'll feel through the three holes here and just get it lined up where the ridge between the edge of the pressure plate and the clutch disc feels the same all the way around. So I think we got it. So I'll tighten down some of these just to hold the, hold the disc in place. The instructions do not say how tight to tighten the pressure plate bolts, so I'm going to go with 25 foot-pounds. All right, now it's transmission time. It's time to put the transmission back onto the engine. We're getting somewhere. I just want to make sure, remind myself that I've greased everything up here, that the throwout bearing hasn't come off of the, the push fork, and that everything's greased up, so we're looking good here. I'm going to get Adam here to help me pick it up and center it. Just pick it up and rotate it. There it goes. That was easy. And the back there's going to be a starter motor so don't thread those but we can thread that one. Okay. Yeah that one needs to be connected to this. This bracket has to go here. I'll go back and torque those later. I replaced the input shaft seal while it was out too. Shouldn't need to take this transmission off for another 80,000 miles at least. I will transfer this uh, mount over to here. Actually what I need to do is uh, I need to put the mount back on. So what I do is uh, this one is temporary, and I got an L bracket I made up for it. All right, I think we're ready to put the engine back in the car. I put up all the wires out of the way. Uh, because the subframe is still in the car, it's going to be pretty tight access to reconnect the power steering pump and the starter motor and the uh, oil cooler back here. So I think what I'll do is bring the engine in, put it in place, and just kind of suspend it, and then connect everything before I uh, lower it back into place. All right, before I forget, we need to install the engine mount on the, on the right side of the car. And I got this fancy Vibratech high-performance engine and suspension mounting system. So we'll install this. Yeah, that's what it said right on the side of it. You weren't kidding. Yeah, it says high performance engine and suspension mounting systems. I wasn't kidding. Well, this is super easy to do it underneath when there's no engine in the car. Usually you got to be crawling around under here to work on this bit. Now we're ready to bring the engine on over. Oh, wait. We need to put the right side mount onto the engine before we lift it up. I forgot about that. I need to put the mount here, but the cart's in the way, so I need to drop it off the cart. So let's back it up and hoist it. It's not really designed for that. I'm dropping it quick here. I didn't design it for that much weight. Now we're going to switch over to the engine hoist. Okay, please lower the hoist. Here, I'll drive. 
We want to go straight. All right, we need to, I can't remember what I did. No, we got to go up, but I, I still have to take this mount off. I forgot I got interrupted. Okay, brackets out of the way. Yeah, that'll work. We got to go up about another, at least another six inches. You got to clear this. Almost. Let's let's try. Start pushing. All right, and it's. Uh, we got the over here. We need to go so, in sideways. Yeah, first. so you go in like this first. Yeah, I'm gonna push forward. You guys, ready? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hit the AC phone. Alright, that's yeah, we just need to go in about another six or eight inches. But I think I'm not going to go in just yet. I think yeah, we'll uh, stop and hook up some. Just be careful over here, you're um, up against the AC wall. Yeah, let's let's start routing the wires before I drop it in. These ones need to go to the back. And they need to go underneath all these uh, heater hoses. These ones go in the back. These ones are right here. And we got a bracket here which goes over the uh, starter motor bolt. And I'll just shove this like that for now. This one basically needs to connect to right here. That has to go around, there we go, like that. And if you do this when the motor's all the way back, you don't have all this room, and it's it's just a, not a fun experience. Because this bolt, if the engine's back all the way, you can't even see this bolt. So I think I'm saving time by hooking up some stuff while we still got the engine floated up. These two go together to the here, but there's another little one, which I'm not seeing, which, which goes to the solenoid. Oh yeah, here we go. Yeah, this goes to the oil pump. This one goes to the oil pump. Boy, it's nice having so much room. One of these goes to the power steering fan, and the other goes to the power steering pump itself. Just like, yeah, there. That goes like that. That one goes there. This is so easy doing it from the top. <laughs> Putting an engine in a car 48 hours before track day. What else? Do we got anything else we need to do? I think that's all I can get for now. Can you push it in more? I'm gonna lower it a tiny bit. Pull, no, pull, pull up on that side. Yeah, I just need you to do that. And then I'm gonna force it onto this pole. There we go. There, like that, see? Now it won't go anywhere on this side. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's that's actually exact, almost exactly where it needs to be. Great. Let's see how close this is to fitting. Can you shine the light here so I can see the hole? Oh, we're right on spot, spot on. How about them apples? All right, we are almost dead on. No, just on the front. That looks good to me. All right, engine has made it to the car, so we can lower it, and we are good. First time there's been an engine in this Mini for five weeks. All right, that's all for part seven. Stay tuned for part eight when we finish connecting the engine back up to the car, and hopefully we might even be able to start it. Thanks for watching, and bye-bye.